Commission. Appeals cards are to our right. If you wish to speak in front of the Commission, we ask you fill out a speaker's card. Each side will be provided 10 minutes with a five minute for rebuttal. And lastly, at the end of the case, if you wish to discuss it any further, we would ask that you exit the building as if you go into the back lobby area. It does echo into the chamber. This time, I would ask you to rise for an invocation by Commissioner Randolph, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Randolph. Gracious Father, once again, we come before you with bowed down head, but lifted hearts to say thank you for all the blessings you bestowed on our lives as you watched over and protected us all this day. To this very moment in time, we say thank you. We thank you for this commission. We thank you for the parish government that we serve. We thank you for the citizens that's in this audience and outside that we also represent. Bless us with the right decisions. And Lord, as we continue on, we ask that, we, that you bless us all with a very healthy, fulfilling, safe, and merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. In our packets are the November 9th, 2016 minutes. Commissioner Randolph. I actually have two corrections. Uh, I move to accept the minutes. Uh, okay, move to accept. However, um, our secretary has two yeah, minutes. I just have two corrections for the record. If you look on the roll call, um, I accidentally left out who was absent. That would have been Richard Fitzmorrison, Mr. Doherty. And on the vote for 2016-393 TP, the tentative approval for Perilou Trace, uh, Mr. Davis is on the vote recorded twice. He should be taken off of the yay as he's, his vote was nay for that vote, just for the record. Thank you. I didn't catch that, but with that correction, I move to, to accept. Move to approve. Move to approve. Second by Commissioner Richardson. Any further comments? Please vote. Motion carries, 10 to zero. This is a public hearing. The public is welcomed and invited to comment on each case. Entering parish right of way, servitudes and easements, we have none. Minor subdivisions, 2016-493 MSP, a combined 27.483 acres into parcels one through four, ward six, district six. Owner, Billy Kennedy. Surveyor, J.V. Burks and Associates, Inc., Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Richard Tanner. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the reason why a public hearing is required for this minor subdivision is that Parcel 4 does not meet the minimum 300-foot road frontage for the A1 zoning district. Uh, the owner has combined acreage of 27.483 acres and is requesting to resubdivide said combined acreage into four parcels. However, parcel four only has 265 feet of road width on Edgar Kennedy Road, and the requirement per the A1 zoning district is 300 feet. Therefore, the applicant is seeking a waiver of that requirement. The staff has no objections to the minor subdivision request since the parcel is over 813 feet in depth and almost five acres in size. Uh, therefore, if the commission decides to approve this request, a waiver of the regulations are required relative to the lot width issue and a two-thirds majority vote of the full membership of the commission, which is eight members, is needed in order to approve pursuant to section 40-100, waiver of regulations of subdivision ordinance 499. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? If you please, please come to the podium and state your name and address and any comments you may have, you can pull that microphone down. Thank you. Hi. Sylvia Kennedy. I'm representing Billy Kennedy. I'm her daughter-in-law, and my address is 33204 Cube Kennedy Road, Perver, Louisiana. 
and the, uh, your reason for the request, ma'am. My mother-in-law is dividing the property to leave to her children, and the, uh, because of the way Cube Kennedy Road falls through the middle of the property, there's no other way to uh, widen uh, that number four parcel. Very good. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Sing on and close it to the public, and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Dougherty. Mr. Chairman, I'd move to, uh, to uh, approve. Motion by Commissioner Dougherty to approve. Second by Commissioner Willie. Commissioner Davis. Yeah, just one question. Who gets parcel three? I'm not sure which that is. That's the smallest parcel <laughs> at all. <laughs> just question. That's I, the I one with the house on, the on it and most of the, uh, the, the buildings on it. That's the, oh, okay. the other ones are just property. Gotcha. All right, thank you. Any further questions? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Dougherty to approve, second by Commissioner Willie. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. 2016-494- MSP. Lot 5 into Lots 5A and 5B, Ward 4, District 5. The owner of the Archdiocese of New Orleans, Surveyor Kelly McHugh and Associates, Inc., Paris Council District Representative, the Honorable Riker Taladano. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the reason why this re is required for a public hearing is this parcel constitutes a further re-subdivision of a lot within an existing minor subdivision. Now, this proposal is basically the same request as what the owner proposed and received approval from the commission back in November 9th meeting for lot four uh, within an existing minor subdivision. And since the request complies with all parish code requirements, the staff has no objection to the proposed minor subdivision request. Mr. Shane. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening. Merry Christmas. Uh, my name's Jeff Shane. I'm with the Jones Fusell Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. I represent the Archdiocese of New Orleans, which is the owner of Lot 5. Uh, when Lot 5 was originally created as one of five lots in a minor subdivision, it consisted of 250 acres, meaning that this one lot, Lot 5, had 250 acres. Bordered on the north by Public Road, Judge Tanner Drive, where it turns into Holy Trinity, bordered on the south by Sharp Road. Uh, the request tonight is to simply resubdivide Lot 5 into the two lots that you see on the plat, uh, all of which meets parish requirements. So in that regard, we ask that you uh, approve our request to resubdivide Lot 5 into Lot 5A and 5B. If any of you have any questions or comments that I need to address, I'll be glad to do so when you're ready. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Shane. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Please come to the podium, state your name and address. Yes, my name's uh, Ken Ress, uh, 306 Lakeshore, uh, Mandeville. Uh, just, it's more of a question. Um, th this parcel's being changed from, um, it was rezoned, part of this parcel was rezoned a while back, uh, lot five. And so now it's, uh, there's another piece been added to it. So the zoning, was approved for a certain thing, and now uh, about three or four acres have been added to this parcel. It was a 104, and now it's 107. And the particular, according to the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement and the Conservation Servitude, the section of property that's being added to this is actually part of a conservancy. I don't know how that affects it, or maybe there's another document I don't know about that changes it again. But both of the documents have maps included and show this particular parcel, this particular piece of property, as part of the parish uh, gave $500,000 worth of impact credits to, to make this a conservancy. Now it's being shifted around again, and I'm just not sure everybody's aware of what's going on with that. Um, the other thing is, it's important about this is this, this particular piece that's been added at a later point here is shown as being a retention pond. And it's part of the conservancy, and in the conservancy document, it specifically says the property has to be left in natural state, and it really has some specific details. I don't know where it falls in where this process. 
other than I'm not sure it's been looked at or maybe there's another document that changes everything. But it just seems kind of odd. Okay, so I, I just, I don't know who can answer those questions. I don't know who, if, if it's the right format, whatever. It just seems like maybe legal counsel can shed some light on it. I don't know. We'll define who. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Shane, did you wish to address that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I guess first and foremost, as you know, resubdivision has nothing to do with zoning, meaning that irrespective of what the property was zoned, is zoned, or will be zoned, is of, I guess, no import. I, I guess technically if the lot being created was not big enough in order to meet, say, setback requirements and things of that nature of the zone, it could be pertinent, but it's pretty obvious <clears throat> that this is a 107-acre lot and a 143-acre lot. Uh, with regard to the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement, it has no applicability as it relates to the proposed resubdivision whatsoever. Uh, with regard to the Louisiana um, Conservation Servitude that was filed on June 30, 2014, um, the uh, speaker is in error. Uh, the map attached to it clearly shows that the area in question is not subject to the conservation servitude. With that having been said, even if the conservation servitude was a part of this property, there's nothing to stop the property from being resubdivided. Uh, the grant of conservation servitude was a servitude. It was not a divestiture of ownership or fee to the parish. And in fact, um, the Louisiana Conservation Servitude document envisions the possibility of sale of property, resubdivision of the property, et cetera. But to answer the specific point made, and that is the additional uh, 3.4 acres, I think, uh, I think there are some things that you need to know about that. If everybody would look at the resubdivision plat before them, and if you would see on the north line of lot 5-A, the area in question is what I guess we'll call that neck or the area that goes beyond the northern boundary. Can everybody see that on the drawing? You need to know a little bit about that. Um, that is area that the developer is going to use to make the detention pond even bigger than originally anticipated. So that's why the resubdivided lot is greater than the parcel that was designated as a PUD. Um, staff has already confirmed to all that um, the fact that the PUD did not include this extra portion of the pond is immaterial as it relates to a zoning or development feature. So in summary, let me say that this additional three plus acres, A, not controlled by the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement in any manner whatsoever, B, it is not a part of Louisiana Conservation Servitude, uh, and three or C, um, it really does not matter what the zoning of that parcel is. This is going to be additional detention, which we hope everyone would appreciate. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Am I allowed to ask a question? One moment. there's no one else, Mr. Shane, would you care to uh, have any other further comment? If not, sure. you may ask. I, I'm just, if you I'm come not, to the podium, I'm please. Sorry. I was given two drawings. Yes, you will. I was, Thank you, Mr. I just, Shane. The only reason I say it is I was given two drawings that, that are stamped drawings that came out. Mm -hmm. If you look at the two of them attached, that piece of property shows it's piece, a part of the conservation servitude. So I, I guess uh, maybe I don't have the right one. Maybe the ones that we were given on record aren't the right ones. I don't know. But it shows them being the same. Absolutely, Mr. Shane. Yeah, you I'll can clarify there. the point. Yeah, right. That's not the piece right there that's not. See right there? There's the two pieces. I'm telling you it's the same piece. Okay. It's I put into the record um, the Louisiana Conservation Servitude. Uh, it was recorded on June 30 of 2014. It's instrument number 1946337. Uh, and I do believe that this property is not burdened with that servitude. And that's based off the survey work that Mr. McHugh's office has done. Thank you. 
Any further comments? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. A motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Davis to approve. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Any further comments? Please vote. Motion carries. 2016-495 MSP, a 1.036 acre parcel into parcels one and two, Ward 8, District 11. Owner, Tamp Construction, Surveyor J.V. Burks and Associates, Inc., Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Steve Stefanczyk. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the reason why a public hearing is required for this case is that the uh, two parcels proposed do not meet the parish's minimum one acre for a minor subdivision. Uh, the staff does not support the minor subdivision request due to the fact that parish code requires a one acre minimum for each lot. However, it should be noted that the property is zoned A3 Suburban, which would normally permit parcels of less than one acre in size, if not for having to comply with the minor subdivision requirement. Therefore, if the commission decides to approve this request, the waiver of the regulations are required relative to the lot width issue, and a two-thirds majority vote of the full membership is required, which is eight members, in order to approve pursuant to section 40-100 waiver of regulations of ordinance 499. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? If you please come to the podium, state your name and address and your reason for the request. Pete Rudisell, 66126 St. Mary Drive, Pearl River, Louisiana. Uh, I built a house on it in 2006 and I'm trying to sell it as a half acre lots. All the lots on that street are half acre lots. And I had it rezoned to, to do this. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. A motion to approve with the waiver. Motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve with the waiver. Second by Commissioner Richards, uh, Willie, excuse me, Commissioner Willie. Uh, Commissioner Lauren. Yes, <clears throat> question for the staff. If, <clears throat> if all the street, all the lots on this street are half acre lots, why are we dealing with this as a? Well, it's because the, as indicated in my staff report, the, the minor subdivision requirements require a one acre minimum regardless of zoning. Uh, regardless but, of zoning. Yes, but the gentleman is, pretty much correct uh, when I went out to the site to post it there are there does appear to be smaller size lots along that street um, but again that's just the code requirement a one acre minimum regardless of what the zoning is Commissioner Willie uh, just uh, another question from staff uh, why does he have to go through the minor subdivision why can't he just sell the half acre well because he has a house on the property already and he wants to subdivide it so he can sell the other parcel but you have to go through a minor subdivision to subdivide it you just can't you have to any any subdivision of land requires you to go through because the minor zoning is in place to to sell that but the subdivision is not in place that's what he's okay. going oh, it's through part right of now. a subdivision yeah okay no no it's a it's acreage property that he's trying to subdivide if i may the Division of property in any form or fashion has to follow one of the processes for subdivision review. <clears throat> the minor subdivision review is set up so that in compliance with state law, you can do up to five acres if there's not creating a public road. The parish council put in, uh, imposed a, re a further restriction that nothing be approved through the administrative process without a public hearing less than an acre. So uh, this has to, if, if each of these lots were over an acre, they it'd be handled administratively because the, one of the lots is less than an acre. Okay. It has to have at least one hearing in accordance with parish ordinances okay. uh, in order to prevent a uh, wholesale re, uh, creation, creation of subdivisions. Yeah, that answers my question. Thank you, Senator. Any other questions or comments? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve with a waiver, second by Commissioner Willie. Please vote. It will take eight votes. Do 
Motion carries. 2016-496-MSP, a 5.0 acre parcel into parcels A, B, and C, Ward 2, District 3. Owner, Preston Back et al., Surveyor, John G. Cummings and Associates, Inc., Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable James Red Thompson. Staff. Hey, Mr. Chairman, the reason why a public hearing is required for this case is that a private drive is accessing one of the parcels, which is parcel B. <clears throat> the owner is proposing to resubdivide a five-acre parcel into three parcels. And since the proposed private drive would only provide access to one parcel within the minor subdivision, which is parcel B, uh, which is exempt from meeting parish road construction standards. And since the proposed minor subdivision meets all other parish code requirements, the staff has no objections to the proposed minor subdivision request. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Ma'am, if you please come to the podium, state your name and address, and the reason for your request. I'm Dion Prestonback. I live at 85275 Highway 25 in Folsom, Louisiana. Uh, the reason for this, as you all know, is so that my children can live on the land with me as I grow older. <laughs> and I don't want to do that too fast, but they're getting prepared <laughs> to take care of their mother. So that's the reason for this petition and hope that it gets approved. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, we close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Uh, Commissioner Willie. Uh, move for approval. I'll second it. Motion for approval by Commissioner Willie, second by Commissioner Casabon. Any further comments? Please vote. <clears throat> Motion carries. Entering the Tammany Trace, we have none. Revocations, closing reviews, we have none. Resubdivision review, we have none. Dormant subdivision review, we have none. Tentative subdivision review. 2016-497-TP. Arndell, Ward 1, District 1. Developer owner, Wing 21, LLC. Engineer, Kelly McHugh and Associates, Inc. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Marty Dean. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a proposed 26-lot uh, single-family subdivision uh, located on the south side of Brewster Road, uh, just to the uh, west of uh, Highway 1077 intersection. Uh, the, uh, from the uh, development planning standpoint, all the staff comments have been addressed. Therefore, the staff recommends approval of the tentative subdivision request, and engineering has some comments. On the tentative plat, remove restrictive covenant number six, add flood zone classification to restrictive covenant number 11 add an additional restrictive covenant stating who will maintain the detention pond we need the stormwater pathway from discharge point to the ultimate disposal point in lake pontchartrain uh, number five under drainage we need to amend this statement uh, it was brought to our attention that this portion of black river is not actually a scenic river therefore instead of a 100 foot buffer uh, we're requiring a no clearing within 50 feet of black river an informational item for preliminary submittal of stormwater agreement with supporting documentation, including a stormwater site plan, is required. Thank you. Mr. Maroon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paul Maroon on behalf of the developer of Arendelle. Um, we either have addressed each of the staff comments or our engineers in the process of doing so. Um, obviously, the, the plat revisions are minor, and we expect to be able to complete those without any issues. Um, our engineer has prepared the stormwater pathway discharge uh, and are, we're prepared to submit that and we will on our preliminary plan reflect the 50-foot buffer off of uh, the headwaters here of the Black River. Uh, finally on the stormwater agreement that's a, a new requirement that I believe was put into place in October. Uh, we are now in receipt of that agreement. We'll have that uh, filled out with the supporting documentation, have that submitted along with our preliminary submittal, which we hope uh, will be forthcoming. I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of the commissioners may have, but we would respectfully request your approval of the tentative plan before you. Thank you, Mr. Marone. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the petition? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. 
Commissioner Davis. Yeah, Paul, just one question. Lot number 26 behind lot one and two. So 26, the home will front Brewster Road, correct? Y yes, yes. It, and then the homes on one and two will face Arndale Drive. They will, and they will access off of Arndale. They will not access off of, off of Brewster. 26 is about a three-fourths um, three of an acre lot. Uh, it is consistent with the other lots along Brewster, there are about three or four others in that stretch that are about three quarters to an acre in size that access directly off of Brewster. And that, that's what will happen here. This was a unique parcel yeah. because of that drainway and, uh, and our need to preserve that area. And so that's why you see the layout as it is. Okay, thank you. Are there any motions or questions from the commission? Commissioner Davis? Uh, motion to approve. I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner Davis to approve, second by Commissioner Casabon. Any? No further comments. Please vote. Motion carries. Preliminary Subdivision Review, 2016-425-PP, The Preserve at River Chase, <coughs> Ward 1, District 1, Developer Owner, The Preserve at River Chase, LLC, Engineer, SLB Engineering, LLC, Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Marty Dean, postponed at the November 9, 2016 meeting. Since this case has already been postponed twice in accordance to parish and state law, the Planning Commission must act on this request. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved subject to the following comments. On the preliminary plat, the minimum required offset between streets was not met between Ar Archwick Circle and Bradbury Place. See attached request for waiver of regulations request. The staff is in agreement with this waiver. Number two, the minimum required right-of-way was not met on Bradbury Place and Prestwood Lane. See attached waiver of regulations request for a reduced right-of-way width. The staff is in agreement with this waiver. Number three, add signature lines for recordation. Grading plan sheet five, provide proposed elevation contours for lots 62 through 76 to demonstrate stormwater will flow to drainage infrastructure and will not cross uh, lot lines. Drainage plan sheet eight, drainage note number 11 on sheet eight, drainage plan should be revised to read as section 40.032.03. Informational items, plans and specifications for the construction of the project's water distribution lines and sewer collection lines have not yet been approved by the Louisiana Department of Health. No work order will be issued until submitted plans and specifications are approved by LDH. Number seven, provide Utilities Inc. of Louisiana with plans for review, comment, and approval. A funded maintenance obligation in the amount of $10,000 is required in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499, Section 406108. Funded letters of credit for existing parish roads to ensure the repair of any damage to parish roads resulting from construction activity in connection with the subdivision. Mandatory developmental fees will be required at the final submittal in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499 since no public hearing was held prior to January 1, 2005. Revised drawings will not be accepted prior to the December 13th Planning Commission meeting to ensure that any additional comments established at the meeting can be incorporated into the revised plans. The Department of Development Planning has no comments. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Prescott Bailey, 635 Main Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, with Southern Lifestyle Development, the developer on this project. I've been up here before and, and kind of taken you guys through the project before. Um, it's a, uh, our plan here is a smart growth uh, development. We typically develop smart growth TNDs. Our, our first notable project was a development called River Ranch in Lafayette. Um, we're joint venturing this project with Sterling Property Group. They approached us to uh, fill a gap in their River Chase development, which was a need for a higher end single family uh, development there. They had kind of all the other components that we like to see in place, the amenities, the retail office, apartments, et cetera. So uh, we came in to joint venture this with them and uh, we've been working to get this approved for about a year now with the parish and, and everyone involved, uh, which has been really, really great to work with. So uh, we're here to present today uh, and ask for your approval. 
Um, there are a couple waivers that we are asking for uh, that, that the plan department has agreed with us on, um, one being an intersection waiver. Uh, from a distance standpoint, we're trying to preserve an oak tree. Uh, we're actually trying to preserve all of the oak trees on the site. We did a survey uh, to make sure we knew exactly where they were all at when we planned the development uh, because we, we understand the value in those trees. <clears throat> and to keep the this preserved oak, we had to offset the intersection a little bit. But fortunately, we don't anticipate much many uh, eastward traffic into the apartments from the other street. So, uh, we don't believe that should be a major issue. The other is a right-of-way variance from a 50-foot to a 47-foot. We typically do this in our smart growth communities to help control traffic, uh, promote walkability, which we anticipate will be a lot of in this development, um, and also to add a little bit of uh, depth to some of the lots and increase the lot size in the buildable area. So uh, those are the two major waivers that we're asking for. I'm here to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. I have a question for the, for the gentleman. <clears throat> yes, sir. On lot number 72, the driveway entrance will come off a of Continental or will it come off the Arc? Arch width. The arch width. Okay. We, we actually have a note on here, I believe, that shows there's a couple uh, driveways that uh, Sydney and Helen at the, the parish pointed out that we needed to make sure we're on the right streets and not going to be a conflict. So we've called those out. Thank you. Yes, sir. Commissioner Randolph? Yes. Um, Prescott. Rob, Rob, right? Prescott. 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 Yes, sir. Um, item number four, grading plus uh, plan sheet five. Have you all provided that? Is there an issue with that? We, we have. Uh, we've redone our grading plan so that all of the, the high points are in the rear and that all the water will be coming back like the parish has requested. Okay. If there are no other questions. Motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve. Second by Commissioner Dougherty. Commissioner Richard. Mr. Prescott, one last question. Yes, sir. Uh, obviously, the staff made a list of recommendations. Uh, is there anything on this list that you think is going to be a problem for you? No, uh, we uh, with the exception of the waivers that you're requesting. Absolutely, no. We uh, we actually uh, the reason we we deferred at the last meeting was so that we could spend some time working with the parish to kind of go through all of their comments, make sure that everybody was on the same page, and I think we all came to agreement that uh, we could we we met the most of the requests they had, uh, the one or two waivers. Uh, I think everybody agreed that would be beneficial to the neighborhood, so uh, we're we're happy with everything right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So the, we have a motion including the waivers? Yes. yes. Very good. Any further comment? Now we have a motion by Commissioner Randolph including waivers, second by Commissioner Dougherty. Please vote. Motion carries. 2016-454-PP, Abita Lakes, Phase 3B2, Ward 10, District 6. Developer owner, Abita Lakes, LLC. Engineer, Duplantis Design Group, PC. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Richard Tanner. Postponed at the November 9th, 2016 meeting. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection was made of the site. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved. A funded maintenance obligation in the amount of $10,000 is required in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499, Section 4061.08, funded letters of credit for existing parish roads to ensure the repair of any damage to the roads resulting in the construction in connection with the subdivision. No mandatory developmental fee is required at final submittal in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499 since a public hearing was held prior to January 1, 2005. Thank you. Yes, hey, sir. How you doing? Tommy Buckle, Duplantis Design Group, 34 Louis Prima Drive, Covington, Louisiana. Um, as staff indicated, we've, uh, we're, we're here for um, preliminary approval. Uh, we've, I think we've addressed all previous staff comments, and so if the commission has any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. So. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? 
So anyone who wishes to speak in opposition, please come to the podium, state your name and address. I'm not, a, I'm not in opposition. I was, wasn't quick enough. Yes, sir. Um, my name is John Ike. I live at 493 Camden Park Drive in Covington in the Beetle Lakes. I'm uh, about as close to this area as anyone in the Beetle Lakes. I have one question. There was some confusion um, about whether this was going to be gated, whether this 17 uh, home subdivision or 17 home area in the back of the subdivision was going to be gated off from the rest of the subdivision. I have conflicting information about that, and I want to clear it up. Mr. Buckle. Yes, sir. Um, so we are we are not going to gate it. There was there was a thought at one point that we were going to gate the the back half of the subdivision, but it's not going to be gated. We submitted a revision um, on the plat back to staff, um, and that's that. Thank you. In that case, I think all of us welcome the development of this area. Uh, it's been a it's been a bit of a nuisance for quite a while. It's been almost a decade since it was cleared out, and it's become a uh, uh, playground for four-wheelers from all over the parish and uh, occasionally for people firing weapons there. Uh, so we're looking forward to uh, looking forward to getting it developed. I just wanted to clear up a bit about the gate. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Please come to the podium, state your name and address, sir. I'm Don Rogowski at uh, 325 Long Lake Drive. Um, I guess the only thing uh, that I'm kind of curious of you most of you may have received an email from me there was a little confusion on the emails uh, this is back in response to uh, Mr. Bruno where he said he was going to look into not this particular property so I didn't want to cause any confusion uh, as far as for where his subdivision uh, removing this but in the other part of the green space which is part of this larger property about whether there was an issue of wetlands or not, and he never, I never heard back from him. He said he was going to have uh, one of his wetlands persons take a look at that. I don't know whether anybody remembers this or, because this was basically the same question is that right now you've got a large piece of track. I want him to develop it. There's no question about that. I want him to be able to develop what he's doing in the back. I'm not trying to stop that. All I'm asking the question is, is, is this part that he's going to subdivide remove any valuable part and then leave liabilities to the homeowners association with the green space and he never got back to whether there are liabilities or not just to clarify is your question relative to this particular parcel in this particular case or to the sub to well, the development here would home? here would be the way and again i i'm a layman so i may be completely in error is that if i understand this part these 17 lots he wants to separate them from the rest of the property that he currently owns. And so when he separates this, these 17 or 19 lots are the only, shall we say, valuable lots to a developer. The rest of the green space, once he separates it from them, he will then turn that over to the homeowners. And so, again, maybe this is not the right form, maybe I confused things last time, but just the idea that it, he'll separate it, and once he separates it, he won't care about any potential liabilities that the uh, homeowners association will incur once he is no longer the developer. That's my understanding. Once he gets these properties, he sells them, then the rest of the green space becomes the homeowners association responsibility and there may be wetlands liabilities. Maybe I'm asking it at the wrong time, but that was my whole question last time. Again, we're trying to s seek a clarity here. So there's obligations on the homeowners association now with that? If I, un if I understand, the uh, property that the developer owns, once he sells off all of his lots and he no longer has any lots, the remaining property is turned over to the homeowners association. Mm -hmm. This is the last set of lots that he's trying to develop and I'm very much in favor of him developing it my only question is is once he develops these he no longer will have any lots and if there's wetlands liabilities he will be walking away from them and turning those responsibilities over to the uh, homeowners association and my concern was is that part of those liabilities 
go across if if the ordinance that I had sent in the email from this planning commission goes across Long Lake, sorry, uh, Clear Lake Drive. I guess that's where I was trying to go. Is that is Clear Lake Drive, which is a public road, does that have liabil wetlands liabilities? As well as there's all other property. There's, uh, anyways, I, if I'm not making myself clear, perhaps it's not pertinent. Uh, I, respectfully, I think that that could be a question to the developer. Right, and it's never gotten it's not, back and said he was. It's, it, as far as relative to the case in front of us, okay. it's, it's not incorporated in it. All right, that's fine. I'm, I'm not that's trying. Good. Trust me, no. I really want him to develop it. He will, that will be good. Thank you. No, he doesn't have any. I mean, I can't call him. Uh, I can have, Mr. Bruno, do you care to have any comment? You don't have any obligation to have any comment. No, okay. <laughs> Is there anyone else who wishes to uh, make a comment relative to the case? If not, at this time, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. Yeah, I like the plot uh, for the drainage and the grading. I'm not that crazy about the other plot because of the italics. <laughs> They're very difficult to read. That's all my only point, but I do make a recommendation to approve. Motion by Commissioner Davis to approve, second by Commissioner Richard. Any further comments? Please vote. <coughs> Motion carries. 2016-41-PP, River Club, Phase 4A, Ward 1, District 1, Developer Owner, River Club Development, LLC, Engineer Kelly McHugh and Associates, Inc., Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Marty Dean. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved subject to the following comments. Number one, informational items, plans and specifications for the construction of the project's water distribution lines and sewer collection lines have not yet been approved by the Department of Health. No work order will be issued until the submitted plans and specifications are approved by LDH. Two, provide Utilities, Inc. of Louisiana with plans for review, comment, and approval. No maintenance obligation is required since this is an extension of a private subdivision. Mandatory developmental fees will be required at final submittal in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499 since no public hearing was held prior to January 1, 2005. The developer has requested a waiver of detention requirements in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance or in accordance with Ordinance 11 dash 2426 the Department of Development Engineering has has reviewed their request and approves the proposed waiver therefore drainage fee in lieu of detention is as follows 8.064 acres at $2,000 per acre for $16,128 the fee shall be due prior to the issuance of any work orders by the parish thank you mr. Moran thank you mr. chairman Paul Moran on behalf of River Club development LLC. This is River Club Phase 4A, another, another phase to River Club. Um, we have addressed all the staff comments, um, save for the few regarding the utilities. Uh, our utility plans have been sent to Utilities, Inc. of Louisiana. They have reviewed them and commented on them. We've responded to that. So we believe that we've addressed their concerns at this point, and we are simply waiting uh, on DHH approval, which we hope to have before very long. So subject to DHH approval of those plans, we would respectfully request your approval of preliminary for River Club Phase 4A. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the petition? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Lauren. No move to approve. Second. Motion, second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Davis. Uh, uh, Paul. Yes. <clears throat> on the future, on the future phase north, that's on the plat. Yes. Uh, the roadways are going to be constructed regardless, though, right? To have that cul-de-sac turn around. If not, how are the people going to? If they come down, if they come down uh, Delta Lane and get to the end of the street, how will they like back up and stuff? And they have a turnaround. Is well, that they um, there is an existing phase to the south. Okay. So 
Okay. Um, so, oh, okay. I'm sorry. So, yes. Uh, I thought that was a future phase two. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Come on. Thank you. Commissioner Dougherty. Uh, uh, Jay, on the uh, waiver of the detention requirements, what they are suggesting and, and you, the engineering has agreed with, will still meet the 25% reduction, right? No, this is, uh, in this area, we allow them to pay the fee in lieu of the detention. Uh, they're located right next to the Chifuncta, so in our opinion, it's better to get this water out into the Chifuncta rather than detaining it, so they're paying the fee in lieu of. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Randolph. If there are no further comments or questions, we have a motion by Commissioner Lauren to approve, second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. Motion carries. 2016-42-PP. Brentwood Estates, Ward 4, District 5. Developer owner, Brentwood Land Development, LLC. Engineer, Kelly McHugh and Associates, Inc. Paris Council District Representative, the Honorable Riker Taladano. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved subject to the following comments. On the preliminary plat, revise 15-foot drainage servitude between lots 32 and 31 to call out a private drainage servitude. Revise 20-foot drainage servitude north of the west pond to read private drainage servitude. Remove the conservation area from within the road right-of-way. The drainage servitude between lots 98 and 99 must be revised to read private 15-foot drainage servitude. Paving and drainage plan, revise the 15-foot drainage servitude on the paving and drainage plan between lots 32 and 31. To call out a private drainage servitude, revise the culvert schedule. It does not match the culvert cal calculations. The drainage servitude between 98 and 99 must be revised to read 15-foot private drainage servitude. Additional informational items, plans and specifications for the construction of the project's water distribution and sewer collection lines have not yet been approved by the Louisiana Department of Health. No work order will be issued until submitted plans and specifications are approved by LDH. Gravity Drainage District 5 comments must be addressed before a work order is issued. A funded maintenance obligation in the amount of $10,000 is required in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499, Section 40.061.08, funded letters of credit for existing parish roads to ensure the repair of any damage to the parish roads resulting from construction activity in connection with the subdivision. Mandatory developmental fees will be required at final submittal in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499 since no public hearing was held prior to January 1, 2005. Revised drawings will not be accepted prior to the December 13 Planning Commission meeting to ensure that any additional comments established at the meeting can be incorporated into the revised plans. The Department of Development Planning has the following comment. Uh, yes, a typical inset detail needs to be depicted on the plat for the roadway width and the radius for the cul-de-sacs. The minimum requirements for cul-de-sacs call for a 60-foot minimum radius with a 26-foot minimum inside turning radius. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Uh, good evening again. Jeff Shane of the Jones Fusel Law Firm, P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, and I represent uh, the owner of the property, the Archdiocese of New Orleans, uh, but perhaps more pertinent in this instance, the developer, proposed developer of this tract, uh, which is uh, Brentwood Estates. Um, I'd like to start my remarks by saying that um, I was called um, early this morning by Councilman Taladana of District 5. Uh, who met apparently last night with uh, some representatives of neighbors and residents in the Sharp Road Corridor that expressed various concerns uh, about the development. Uh, Councilman Taladana asked Mr. McHugh and I to come to his office this afternoon, which we did, uh, and spent about an hour, hour and a half with him listening to those concerns. Uh, he asked that I comment tonight as it relates to a request that the development team, myself and Mr. McHugh, be willing to meet uh, with Mr. Taladana and the area representatives. I told him we would be glad to do that uh, after this meeting. I don't mean literally tonight, but at a time to be scheduled. Uh, that was something that Mr. Taladana wanted to do, but he wanted me to uh, make that clear to not only you, but also to the people that are here this evening. 
and I say with all sincerity that we look forward to studying the concerns that were presented to us this afternoon and to the extent that we can address those we will certainly try to do so. Um, with regard to the matters before you this evening, um, we are in accord with the staff comments that have been read by Mr. Watson. Uh, in particular, you should know that um, last Friday, December 9th, we did submit uh, revised plans uh, to his office, which I'm sure he has not had an opportunity to review, and we would not have suggested that he should have reviewed them by now. But we have, in fact, um, attempted to comply with each and every uh, comment and requirement. Uh, a couple of points that I would like to make. Um, as you may remember, in fact, how could you probably forget, you approved the Brentwood Estates uh, PUD zoning um, at your October uh, zoning commission meeting. I make mention of that because uh, between the time of the appeal and the appeal hearing before the parish council, Mr. Tala Dana requested and required that our traffic and drainage studies be completed and be submitted to both the parish as well as to the drainage district. Uh, this is Gravity Drainage District 5. Uh, their consultant is Duplantis Design Group. Um, and so at the time of the PUD appeal hearing and the uh, eventual adoption of the PUD ordinance the following month, the council was presented with evidence that the drainage review as of that time by the parish and the Dra Gravity Drainage District were in fact acceptable. However, there was an important comment, I think it's fair to say with each approval, and that is, is that each body, both Mr. Watson on behalf of his department, as well as Tommy Buckle on behalf of Duplantis, reserved the right to see what the formal submittal would be in conjunction with preliminary subdivision. Because it's one thing for us to do a study as it relates to a zoning appeal, but obviously you have specific requirements as it relates to what uh, you and your staff expect to see uh, in the drainage submittal for preliminary subdivision uh, consideration. In that regard, I think Mr. Watson's comment, comments are self-evident, certainly based on my concurrence that those comments are acceptable and have been addressed. I also wanted to let you know that Duplantis Design Group has likewise reviewed the hydrology or drainage plan that has been submitted for this evening and they are generally satisfied with what they have received. Mr. Buckle told me there are a few things that he has some questions about. We told him that we will be glad to address those and we certainly concur uh, with requirement nine that says the work order will not issue until reasonable comments of Gravity Drainage District 5 are addressed. Lastly, and not to be um, over laborious with this presentation, but I think there are some things that would be important to you uh, as a planning commission based on things that we, all of us on this side of the banister and you discussed at the zoning level. And, and that would be as follows. Please note that on this plan of development, we are no longer seeking a waiver uh, as it relates to the length of the streets or the cul-de-sacs. Some of you had expressed concerns about that. You'll see that we are building, in essence, a roundabout to break up um, what otherwise would have been a long run. We also mitigated the length of street before the cul-de-sac by looping the street in phase one. So matters that otherwise might have appeared to be waiver at the time you looked at the PUD obviously have been eliminated. Furthermore, as I discussed earlier during the minor subdivision case tonight, which is of course the same property, please note that now the detention pond to the east extends another approximately three to three and a half acres. We did that for the, all of the reasons that you might imagine, and that was to make sure that we not only met the ordinance, but that we were doing a good job in collecting and catching the water. Uh, also, with regard to the natural flow of water that comes from the south, the natural drainage or topography uh, suggests that water coming from St. Michael's Church campus, Victorian Oaks, and other areas to the south, it actually flows to the north uh, through our subdivision. Uh, our drainage plan specifically addresses that situation, and we have obviously accommodated for the continued 
uh, drainage or migration of that water in a very orderly manner through our subdivision. So that in no way will the construction of this subdivision serve as a dam or a block that would otherwise stop the natural drainage from continuing to flow in the direction that it flows uh, historically. Um, I would say uh, maybe last but not least, um, if there's ever a project that I've been involved with that's had scrutiny as it relates to drainage, this is probably it. Uh, I believe it's not only a product that meets your ordinance, but there are two other things that if you're not aware of, you should be. At the time the council approved the PUD, there were two very significant requests made by Tal Mr. Taladana, which have been granted or agreed to by both the archdiocese and the developer. Number one, it was to increase the amount of the conservation servitude that already exists by an additional 42 acres so that nearly all of the property north of the development that's in the green space will now be burdened with a conservation servitude that runs in favor of the parish. It will not only certainly protect the environment, but it will stop this developer or a future developer from seeking um, and a modification to the PUD and getting a permit from the Corps of Engineers that might allow for the creation of more lots in that green space. The other thing, which I think is even more significant than that, is that the Archdiocese and the developer have signed a letter of intent, which Mr. Taladana is holding, wherein we have agreed to donate, donate to the parish of St. Tammany an amount of acreage along Bayou Tet Lures for the construction by St. Tammany Parish if and when it deems it necessary, appropriate, and if and when the parish has the funds for a regional detention facility. The concern had been that a lot of the subdivisions in that watershed do not have detention systems in place. So uh, the seller and buyer, the developer in this project are actually giving property to the parish to accommodate those deficiencies. We do that in a spirit of being a good neighbor. It has nothing to do with draining our property. It's in an attempt to try to improve the drainage in the watershed in that area. So hopefully uh, all of these things taken into consideration will encourage you to grant preliminary subdivision approval for Brentwood Estates this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the petition? opposition to the petition um, you'll be provided a total of 10 minutes I understand that you have parsed into different speakers if you would like at any given time for us to recognize the support we'll be glad to ask for a show of hands but at this time we will hold everybody to the protocol that we typically have we'll go so as fast as please we state can. your name and address for the record my name is Beth Albritton I live at 60 Park Place and I'm the president of Park Place Homeowners Association. In zoning, the petitioner argued that this subdivision was consistent with adjacent properties or properties in the area, not only consistent but less dense than surrounding areas. Let me try to put this into perspective with the surrounding areas. The 50 garden homes in Phase 3 will be on parcels that are 45 feet by 65 feet and will border homes in Park Place and Victorian Oaks that are on one-third and three to three-quarter acre lots the Sharp property on two five-acre parcels, and St. Michael's Church on 12 acres. If you were to put 50 homes on one-third acre lots, they would encompass 16.2 acres. If you were to put 50 homes on half-acre lots, they would encompass 24.5 acres. This project proposes 50 homes on 45 by 65 foot lots. This would encompass 3.3 acres. The fact is that this is five to seven times smaller than surrounding areas. As you can see from these pictures of garden homes in St. Tammany Parish, you are allowing a wall of homes to border these properties. These homes will take up the vast majority of the lots and therefore will be literally in the backyards of these existing property owners. If the garden homes are two-story homes, they will be overlooking the backyards of these property owners. It is simply not right that you are allowing such a drastic change to the area. We all knew that this property would eventually be developed, but expected the parish to do the right thing and only allow comparable properties to be developed there. In these pictures, this is the view we have now. This is an example of a good 50-foot no-cut buffer. 
and this is an example of an inadequate buffer. While the zoning change is done, we are, however, still pleading for your help in protecting the existing property owners from the visual impact of these homes, as well as other issues being addressed tonight. We request a 50-foot buffer along all of the properties south of Phase 2 and Phase 3 of Brentwood. After reviewing the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement, we found the minimum buffer given to other areas around this project is 50 feet. Around this property, there is a 100-foot buffer for Westwood, a 75-foot buffer at Dove Park, a 50-foot buffer for Sharp Road, and a 100-foot buffer along Lot 4 by the cemetery. There is nothing along the southern border of Lot 5. Why is one property owner more protected than another? 25 feet is simply inadequate. If you look at these pictures at the 50-foot buffer between Maison du Lac and Normandy Oaks, the developer did an excellent job of responsibly putting this buffer along the entire length of this property. It provides a pleasing separation and little to no visual impact to the larger homes. Area homeowners bought properties with the regional level of privacy based on the existing zoning of the area and developments already in place, a concept supported by the parish multiple times. Now you have changed the rules with complete disregard to existing area residents. If you refuse to consider the density of the Brentwood homes, you should at least consider an adequate buffer across phase two and three. Please notice the closeness of the houses to one another of garden homes. How is the water going to flow between these houses? Look at the cars parked in the street. Imagine during evening hours with short driveways and garages that are used for storage. What is to prevent the houses and gates, the, the storage and the gates that will impede water flow. Many of these issues would be resolved if you considered reducing the density, but at least you can protect area homeowners with an adequate buffer. The only reason we have received for not having an adequate buffer is that it doesn't fit into the economic profitability of this project for the developer. We would like to demonstrate the following. A 50-foot buffer added along the length of Phase 2 and 3 would involve moving the lots to the north about 50 feet. The Phase 2 lots are 65 feet wide and at most 11 house home lots are affected for a total of 35,750 square feet. The Phase 3 lots are 45 feet wide and at most 20 lots are affected for a total of 45,000 square feet. This adds up to less than two acres. Assuming $30,000 per acre mitigation cost, this would be less than $60,000. If you divide this cost across the whole development of 102 houses, that is less than $600 per lot. If you divide it just across phase two and three, it will be $900 per lot. We have been advised that the developer will be investing an additional $200,000 to add a turn lane into Brentwood from Sharp Road. The turn lane is not favored by the residents of Sharp Road and is money not well spent by the developer. The developer would actually save money by investing his money into wetlands mitigation of approximately two acres or a $60,000 cost and saving $140,000 and not build a turn lane on Sharp Road. This would be a win-win for both the developer and the area residents and St. Michael's Church, giving them the privacy of a 50-foot buffer to help maintain their quality of life. Paul Broussard, uh, 313 Lakeshore Drive in Alderman Lake Subdivision. Uh, I know we're going to be pressed for time, so I'll speed this up a bit. Um, many of the uh, residents like me have been there in, in our subdivision 25 years or greater. Uh, like the Farmers Insurance commercial says, uh, we know a thing or two since we've seen a thing or two. In those 26 years, Sharp Road has gone from a sleepy, little almost country road with stop signs at each end of Asbury and at uh, Highway 59 to a now a popular bypass route around Highway 190 onto a 35 mile an hour uh, road. So we're justifiably nervous about the traffic situation on Sharp Road and in St. Tammany Parish in general. Traffic is bad now and with new developments happening at what we see as almost breakneck speed something's got to give. Unfortunately, potentially our overall quality of life begins to suffer. 
We recently met with the uh, members of the Paris engineering staff to get some general insights into the TIA. They helped us uh, a lot. The staff is doing a, a, a great job doing reviewing individual applications, um, but it's mostly a micro-type view of the application. Um, if they meet the existing St. Tammany Parish ordinances, they're recommended for approval. But whose job is it to look at the macro or the big picture? Is it the Zoning Planning Commission, uh, the Parish Council? I don't know. Uh, our continuing construction has outpaced our existing infrastructure. Is it time for a slowdown or a moratorium? I sort of think so. The uh, 2008 Phase One Transportation Plan, that 63-page document that was done in conjunction with the New Direction 2025, recognizes the roadway deficiencies and identifies them. Some are federal and some are state projects. Of the many roadways listed, several of are interested uh, of interest to us on Sharp Road. I-12, federal improvements obviously are needed in the Covington area, uh, three, four, three and a half mile interstate stretch between the 190 ramp and Highway 21, but not specifically addressed in the study. Highway 190 widened to six lanes, US 190 from I-12 to 190B, I guess that's bridge, and that was done. Uh, Louisiana Highway 59, the improvement suggested was a four lane from I-12 to 190 and from I-12 to Abita. Maybe that would alleviate some of the uh, heavy traffic that comes from I-12. Uh, 3228 or Asbury, we understand three laning is currently planned. Uh, Sharp, Fairway, or Judge Tanner and Lonesome, the plan was stated uh, the plan stated was to three-lane sharp. We're not too excited about that with the use of sharp as a 190 bypass already. The report states that St. Tammany is the highest growth parish in the state of Louisiana, and we believe that to be true. The phase one transportation plan was to be sent to the Regional Planning Commission for its use in future transportation planning efforts. Uh, the phase one plan would then be updated as part of the new direction 2025 process to include uh, phase two findings. So it's been eight years since the phase one recommendations were done. Very little of those recommendations have actually been implemented. The report conclusions state that St. Tammany will widen roadways as a last resort. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Mr. Shane, if we grant them additional time, you currently have seven minutes. And uh, okay. how much, just a question, I, how I much longer for you, and do you have any other areas? Okay. okay. Yeah. We're going to grant you combined three more minutes. Okay. So finish up. We'll let this gentleman, Mr. Sure. Shane, we're going to give you 10 minutes to rebut. So many of the budget dollars would come from the state of Louisiana, which is currently cash poor. So will they ever happen? Uh, in conclusion, can we slow down the development maybe a little so we get a, a valid big picture? Um, you've heard the term death from a thousand cuts. Individually, permits don't seem to matter. But over time, a thousand cuts, a thousand permits approved in a short period of time could be bad. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dan Shapiro, 123 Blue Heron Drive in Mandeville. And I, I want to talk about the TIA, TIA specifically. Um, and we're handing out uh, uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to be going over. But um, according to the parish ordinance, a, uh, an intersection that is uh, worse than a D in other words, over 55 seconds per vehicle is considered a failed intersection. And that's a section that's ordinance 40-042-50. Um, so in the, TIA, in the TIA, 
uh, on page five, the current, this is eastbound Sharp Road at 59, the current delay is 53.8 seconds and the, and the proposed with project delay is 54 seconds. So we're 1.1 second away from being a failed intersection. Um, now, uh, one of the assumptions that is in the TIA, TIA is that they assume that 70% of the traffic will turn right toward Asbury and 30% will turn left toward Sharp Road. Uh, section 40-042-50 of the ordinance says the, uh, the methodology and assumptions which are used in determination of trip distribution and traffic assignments shall be described. I couldn't find where the description was in the TIA. And the question is, well, what if, what if it's not 70-30? What if it's 60-40? What, what if it's 50-50? How will that affect that 54 seconds? Um, so uh, the other piece on, on the TIA says that future, f their calculations, future calculations, inc including future growth and this project are for year 2017. However, um, the same section 40-042 in the ordinance says that in the case of projects with several phases to take place over several years, the trip distribution and, tra and traffic assignment shall be estimated for the completion of each phase. Now we have phase one, two, and three here, which will not take one year, we believe. We think it'll take probably three. Um, so how will that affect that intersection in year two and year three? Um, something minor, uh, I think, or maybe it's minor. Uh, in one part of the TIA, it says PM peak occurs from 5 to 6 p.m., but if you look at the Appendix D, uh, in the middle it says peak hour uh, done was from 4.45 to 5.45. Now maybe, maybe the 15 minutes doesn't matter, or it, we don't know. However, here's something I think is significant. If you look at Appendix D, look at the date that we believe this uh, traffic was taken, the traffic count was taken, a 24-hour traffic count, it was done on Tuesday, May 17th, we think. Um, the, the section 40-042 of the ordinance says uh, that no count shall be conducted, the count shall be conducted during the school year, but no, no major holidays, and it includes exam weeks on the ordinance. I have the Fountain Blue High School calendar, which shows that in May, on May 10th was graduation, so during this traffic count there were no seniors driving on 59 and Sharp. And secondly, from the 16th, May 16th through the 20th was final exams. And according to this, it looks like the traffic count was done on May 17th, which I think is in violation of that ordinance. So we, we believe that a new traffic count should be done. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Yeah. Go ahead. One minute. It's, it's a suggestion. Um, when I was in here for the zoning meeting, I brought a big map in, and my, my big concern was the length of the cul-de-sacs, which Mr. Shane was saying they did put a roundabout in the middle of. It shortened the length of everything. Uh, can you stand this out there? So I, I disagree with the not needing a waiver. The cul-de-sac past the turnaround is still a little over 1,300 feet from the back of the turnaround to the end of this far cul-de-sac. So I would think that they would need a waiver. Now, the suggestion I've got, and I didn't get a chance to do anything with it until this afternoon, would be to redesign the garden home area into a loop similar to what they did in phase one. Uh, and you should be able to get all of the homes in since they moved the retention pond uh, from the area that was part of phase three up to the north when they added the, the larger retention pond with the section that was done in the earlier piece today. So my thought is, is if we take a look at this, 
we can make something that flows better, that works better, and in the end, we'll make the subdivision work better, which will keep the property value of it up, which will help us and the developer and everyone else. So I, I wanted to bring this up as something to consider that gets around the cul-de-sac problem, it gets around the radius problem with the cul-de-sacs, and it gives a nice turnaround in the end. And I didn't get a chance to present this sooner so that everybody could talk about before this meeting, but um, I'd, I'd like it to be considered as an alternative to a waiver for the cul-de-sac and, and something that would work better. So that, that's all I've got. Thank you. Mr. Shane, you'll be given 12 minutes on the first. I do have a question. Were there meetings, some meetings with Mr. Taladano, uh, Councilman Taladano, previous to this meeting? The only one? Uh, no, we've had other meetings, but some of the things we, we've had. My question is, did you have meetings with yes, com Councilman Taladano yes, regarding this? Um, this stuff here, yes, we did last night. Thank you. <laughs> Including the new layout? No, he no, didn't see the layout. layout. No, oh, okay. So the layout we, wasn't we, included. No, that was not. So the layout's being presented tonight for right. the first time. First time we've got it. First of all, I appreciate the additional time, and I hope that those of you remember uh, that I tried to get a few extra minutes at the council meeting last time, and I was bristled pretty good when I asked for a couple more minutes. I, Mr. I, Shane, if you would address the commission. I, I am Thank glad you. to know, though, that in the spirit of Christmas tonight, we all have plenty of time to communicate with each other, because that's what's important, that we try to discuss the issues at hand. Uh, I'd like to start by saying that with all due respect to these comments, uh, I believe that the density, um, the buffer, and the traffic issues have been fully and finally resolved. I'm not suggesting that they can't be discussed before you or that you can't ask questions, but I do think it's important to talk about process initially. And this PUD, by definition, included not only a layout, street layout, amount of buffer, and the traffic, the TIA, and, and comments from uh, engineering as it relates to the TIA, all of those things were addressed by you as a zoning commission, and all of those things were addressed by the council when it took a look at the zoning ordinance. And in fact, many of those elements had something to do with the additional uh, considerations that the developer was willing to put onto the PUD plan at the time the council approved the PUD plan. So um, with all due respect, many of these things, it's the first time we've heard about them tonight. I'm not sure that I'd be in a position to comment on them uh, in detail or technically, but I'm not really sure that I would care to, even if I had all the time in the world, only because I believe those issues have been presented, they've been vetted, all sides have had adequate opportunities to present their case, the council has made a decision, and I believe that those issues, again, are resolved. Now, there are some things, I think, tonight that are erroneous that the opposition have suggested that I would like to address. Um, first and foremost, um, the garden home area, phase three, those are not 45 by 65 foot lots. Those are 45 by 65 foot building envelopes, and there is a significant difference because that entire area around those building envelopes is in fact a green space. And I would also suggest to you that if you look in the Unified Development Code, in fact, I know that I've had at least one meeting with Mr. Fontenot and Mr. Han, where we looked at the St. Tammany Parish uh, density calculation methodology, um, all of the proposed density, whether it be lots or in fact building envelopes, meet the criteria uh, that is suggested, or not suggested, that's mandated uh, in the code. I should also mention to you that there are a minimum of 15 feet between the homes uh, in the garden home section. Uh, with regard to the buffer, um, it's interesting to me that a project that brings a 50-foot buffer along Sharp Road, when I dare say that there's no other subdivision, or perhaps only one or two on Sharp Road, that have a 50-foot buffer in the front, and this is a 50-foot no-cut buffer, 
I think that's very significant. Those buffers are not created by code. Those buffers were created in the negotiation of the Cooperative Endeavor Agreement uh, back in 2013, and that's why they're there today. Um, the turn lane that was mentioned was not mandated or required by the traffic impact analysis, nor was it recommended as mitigation uh, by your traffic engineer. It was something that Mr. Taladana suggested and in fact insisted upon. It's a multi six figure component of our project, but he felt that it did two things. There's no other turn lanes on Sharp Road. There are subdivisions that are far greater in number in terms of lots uh, and the number of cars that go in and out. He wanted to promote safety to have a turn lane, but he also wanted to promote free flow of cars so that everyone would not come to a dead stop for a vehicle turning left going eastbound on Sharp Road. It's not my place to question his wisdom, but it sounds to me like his wisdom may have been right on as it relates to safety. Uh, if he and or you or the council decides that a traffic lane is not needed, we can address that, I guess, at that point. But I want you to know that's the history of that. And we didn't argue about it. We thought it made good sense. And again, it was an improvement that the developer was willing to make. Uh, with regard to Mr. Broussard's comments uh, concerning the 2008 traffic plan, I don't think any of us in the room disagree uh, that the need for more infrastructure everywhere throughout our parish is very apparent to any of us that drive daily. So um, we understand that uh, the hope of getting more infrastructure is something that is needed, not just as it relates to this project, but I do think it's interesting that there was a suggestion, if I heard it correctly, uh, that um, the idea of three-laning Sharp Road would not be a good thing, yet I hear that this is an overused corridor and that there are too many cars on it already. I don't think I heard any discussion tonight about the roundabout that's planned where Sharp Road intersects Highway 59, which clearly is going to facilitate better flow of traffic, more safety, things of that nature, and improve the level of service at that particular intersection. Also, I think you would be interested to know that your parish traffic engineer confirmed, I believe today, that the state is not only satisfied with the traffic study, but did not require further analysis as it relates to the intersection of Sharp Road at Asbury or Sharp Road at Highway 59. So I don't want there to be some belief or suggestion that maybe this subdivision is at a tipping point as it relates to the number of new cars that it's going to put on Sharp Road as it relates to level of service. And as you know, if we're going to talk about traffic, ultimately it gets down to your ordinance and it gets down to level of service. With regard to our traffic study, I will simply state, we took the traffic count at a time that we think is permitted by the parish as per its ordinance. Our traffic study was reviewed and approved uh, by the parish engineering department. So we believe that it's, it is in good order and we don't believe that it's flawed and that there's any reason to take additional traffic counts. In fact, I would say that in the grand scheme of things, the contribution of 102 lots off of 104 acres as it relates to any impact, whether it's drainage, traffic, aesthetics, et cetera, is relatively minimal. Because if you take a look at the development of tracks, not only on Sharp Road, but throughout the parish, it's not often that you'll see that one-to-one -one ratio. It's very often gonna be something less than that. Um, I think the last uh, comment that I would make is that in, in the spirit of the first comment I made this evening, the concepts that have been suggested this evening by the opposition, some of those concepts were discussed with us this afternoon by Mr. Taladana. So again, I will reiterate that the developer, irrespective of the result this evening, is willing and looks forward to sitting down with the resident representatives and Mr. Taladana to meaningfully discuss those issues in hopes that if there are some things that can be done, can be considered, we will do so. It's obviously impossible to do that tonight, particularly when you hear most of these things uh, for the first time tonight. Um, I guess last but not least, as it relates to the cul-de-sac and length of street, um, we do not wish to redesign the subdivision. 
Uh, we do not think a waiver is needed, but if staff believes that a waiver may technically be needed where that roundabout is and or where we have a street that branches off in phase three to the north, we would ask that those be considered as waiver items so that if there is a motion for approval this evening, it would include a waiver as it relates to any street length and our cul-de-sac issue so that the record will be clear uh, if, in fact, a motion were to pass when it goes to your council. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Opposition, you'll be given five minutes of rebuttal. Um, to say the, the traffic study meets the requirements when it, you have at least three or four items that don't meet the ordinance, exactly what the ordinances say, the time of the year, the, uh, the, the, the adding of the extra phase time, the 3% they add per year, um, and I forget there was one more. I think there's three items in particular that doesn't meet the ordinance. I don't know how you can say it meets the requirements. I don't know how staff didn't push it back. Well, it, it should have been pushed back, I think, then. The reason we didn't say anything sooner, we have tried to comment, we tried to get involved in the zoning portion. As you all know, that was tentative and zoning. We were told we couldn't get into any of the details at that time. We weren't allowed to talk about it. We said, come back in planning. We'll have the discussion in planning. And we did that. We, we said, okay, we weren't happy, but we we'd started doing our research. We've had to read every document ourselves, read the ordinances, do the studying. We're just finding out the answers ourselves each day. So to think that, you know, we didn't bring it up sooner, it's because we didn't know sooner. And we don't feel any different, okay? The buffer issue, we've been told, don't worry, there's only six houses. Does that seem like the right answer? Six people don't matter. It's their house backs up. They don't shouldn't have a buffer that the, all the way around. The buffers that were granted, the 100 foot along Westwood, the 50 foot, we didn't ask for those back in the beginning. The councilman at that time, Mr. Gould, arranged for all of that through the A&O. That was done before this project. That has nothing to do with those. Those were locked in. And there were also buffers all the way around the rest of it. There's no reason at all that these people shouldn't be considered in this buffer and a 50 foot a 25 foot buffer in the winter time is like nothing you can see straight through it so that's that's not and and look at the drainage the drainage on this goes between the houses and you're going to think none of the people are going to put things in there and plant things and put fences and all the things you can say we'll have covenants and protect it and everything but you know and i know there's gonna be trash cans there's gonna be bicycles and that's the main flow path for all the 12 acres from saint michael's church Sharp Road, the Sharp Residence, and the Victorian Oaks has to flow th between each of those houses. Just seems like it's a little risky. Okay, we've asked for a drainage ditch to go along and collect the water and direct it instead of that. We feel like that's a better answer. Uh, we're worried about flooding. So, you know, we're amateurs. Mr. Shane does this for a living. You all know he's pretty good. Okay, we do the best we can and getting the information as we can, but that doesn't make it any less important or any less need to be respected for what it is. And we've, had, we've struggled to do that. And we feel like we've had a hard time getting our message to you. We, we can't meet with you outside of it. We have to wait till the meeting. I mean, we'd love to sat down with the planning commission, at least talk about what we see. So you could ask the questions, but we're not allowed to. We did meet with... Uh, the, some of the engineering staff this week to talk about the TIA. After we talked to them is when we realized there were things about the TIA that were wrong. We didn't understand it enough to find out till now. They helped us by understanding it. That's all they did. They didn't talk about this TIA. They told us how TIAs are put together. And that's, they said, we can't talk about this one. They were fair as, as fair can be. And so we feel like we're doing all the right things, but we sure don't feel like we're being heard. And Mr. Sharp here is not even going to get a chance to talk. Lived in his house for 71 years. He borders that property. 71 years, that's been his home. And he's got five acres there that borders this, and he doesn't even get a chance to talk. What's wrong with that picture? What is the hurry? Who's waiting? We're asking you to give him the time. This man lives there. It's his home. Thank you. 
there's a minute and a half remaining if uh, the gentleman would like to speak. Yes, I would. My name's Gary Sharp. I've been living on Sharp Road for 71 years. My sister Marilyn and my brother Daryl and I have a total of 12 acres that border the Brentwood development. I would quickly like to go over the concerns of development and request that you can address these concerns and, and revise the proposed development plan. We would like a buffer zone along our property line. In the environmental assessment forms uh, submitted to the, by the developer, the statement said that the subdivision will not have an adverse visual impact. We disagree and feel that the, the statement is incorrect. Instead of viewing the current green space, we will have a wall of garden homes. We are uh, requesting a no-cut buffer on the, that is shown on the current plan in a portion of the Brentwood that borders the Victorian Oak subdivision. Why are we being treated different than everyone else? In the same form, it indicates that the proposed development will not breach any local standard related to the flooding and in the nation, we disagree. The majority of our uh, property acreage drains to the north via the flow of the area of that to uh, Brentwood. With the proposed density of the garden homes that will border our property, how will the water drain to the north? There is no drainage ditches or other features along the border between Brentwood and our acreage that will enable our land to drain. In the 1995 flood, we had no water in our yard or our house. It is our fear that in the event of a flood, uh, our home will be flooded from the Brentwood. We ask to ensure this does not happen. The developer represented stated that the, the conditions drainage to be improved will be improved. In our current design, we believe this is not the, the case in our property. We are concerned about the suitability of the housing density compared to us and our neighbors. The proposed three to four homes per acre is not reflective of our area. In a review online by the prior zoning meeting, the developer representative stated that the housing density is, uh, in this development is similar to the surrounding area. This is not true. People moved over here to St. Tammany Parish because of the, the homes, the large lots, the schools. This development right here is a cancer on St. Tammany Parish. It is going to spread throughout the parish, and you're going to benefit the, the end product. In 20 years, these houses are going to be totally burnt. They built out of the most cheapest products that you can do. And these guys are going to be gone. You're going to have the bill. Thank you. Thank you, sir. This time we're going to close it to the public and bring it to the commission. Why would... Why would Mr. Shane get a rebuttal? A second rebuttal? No, Mr. Shane was granted his time. If the commission wishes to ask Mr. Shane or the residents, the commission may do so. Right. Yes, Mr. Shane has had the time. Mr. Davis. <clears throat> Question for engineering. The TIA is acceptable, correct? Yes, we reviewed the TIA. Okay, and TIA is, is acceptable. The PUD zoning meets all the requirements currently with St. Timothy Parish. Is that correct? Yes. I understand about the fears of everybody out in the audience tonight. I do like the idea about the increased retention ponds that uh, the, the, the individuals will be providing in this area. With that being said, I just, I, I believe this is appropriate. 
the way it is. So I'll make a motion to approve. I'll motion, second it. Motion by Commissioner Davis to approve, second by I Commissioner Casabon. Commissioner Lauren. Mr. Shane, may I ask you a question, please? <clears throat> yes, sir. You had mentioned that, that uh, the councilman had requested an additional meeting. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea when that meeting might occur? He asked it to be next week. Okay, so it, that that answers one. And one one thing, if I can make a little speech. One one thing that we find that many people that come to these meetings don't always understand all the rules because they come when there's something in their area and they're new to it. If we were to pass this tonight, as the motion is in, has been made, you have the right to appeal that, okay? In the interim period, there's going to be the meeting that Mr. Shane talked about with the councilman and I would assume with the homeowners or the interested parties and perhaps you can work out the differences that you have. That would be your opportunity to do that. But right now, as the staff has said, this development meets the rules and we go by what the professionals have to say. It could well be that you can get with Mr. Shane and with the councilman and work out some additional differences of opinion. But I'll, I just want to make sure you understand you have that right for those that you may not know it. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's a lot of moving parts on this. Um, there's a lot of really good discussion that's taken place thus far. Uh, it's made us as a, a commission ask a lot of tough questions and while it may not seem sometimes that you're not being heard Understand there's a lot more that we're looking into as to we simply rely on experts to tell us the information In that regard on the traffic study um, is there Any validity to the information that's been presented as far as the study was done in violation of our own ordinances? No, we believe that the, the traffic study was done uh, according to our ordinance, uh, taken during times that we allow. And um, as far as the, uh, the trip distribution, we were in agreement with the traffic study and um, all of our issues have been resolved. There was one, and I, and I I hear what you're saying, Jay, and appreciate that. There was one concern that the actual date that it was done on, can you confirm or deny the date that they, because if they think right. it was the, done on the a certain date, was, and it was done on a different day, that the date might... was May 17, and the final day of school was May 20, so it was done during school. Point of order, please. Okay. Uh, obviously, we'll... Uh, I'd love to take a hard look at that. I understand what you're saying, and I heard what the, uh, what the members of the audience have said. So, uh, second comment I want to make, and again, there's, there's probably, we could spend a lot of time talking about this, but I do want to commend the developer. I know we, we, we kind of beat them up a little bit and, and some other issues. They have um, heard us from when we said we had a problem with the cul-de-sac and the length, um, length of the street. They heard us when we were concerned about drainage. Uh, I'm not saying that, again, I'm an expert on drainage, but there's clearly an effort being made here to not only meet our rules of the amount of drainage that needs to be retained within the, <coughs> the PUD, but to help the surrounding area. So we don't know the impact of that yet. We're certainly not, um, I'm not an engineer. It's got to run through our engineering department as well as any other interested engineers in the community. But it, I like what they're saying. I, I like what they're trying to accomplish here. Uh, there is some concern by the area residents over density. Um, you know, not every subdivision in St. Tammany is going to be like 
the subdivisions of the last 20 years. There's going to be varying types of density, and that is the future of growth. Growth is coming. We're going to have to deal with this infrastructure issue. We all live it. Uh, it's going to come down to funding. And when someone puts something on a ballot saying we need a millage so that we can improve our roads, we need to vote for it. I mean, there's no other place for that money to come from. So um, I just wanted to take a moment to, I know we beat, we beat the developers up sometimes. I, I think they made a lot of effort here. I'm not interested, however, in offering a broad waiver for something that doesn't exist yet as far as waiver of the, the length of the street. Either the staff tells us that it meets the ordinance or it doesn't. That's what I'm interested in hearing. Thank you. Commissioner Randolph. And that, uh, thank you, Todd. That is my question. Um, as it relates to the cul-de-sac and the length of the street, what does the waiver fit into that? How does that fit with the, this entire project? What you have here is looking at, you know, this, the for lack of a better term, roundabout that the developer put in. Uh, uh, meets or meets the spirit of the cul-de-sac regulation. The cul-de-sac regulation is designed so that large vehicles or the cul-de-sac or the break in a block regulation is designed so that large vehicles, really any vehicle, but particularly large vehicles, buses, fire trucks, delivery trucks, those types of things, don't go down a long street and have no place to turn around. The solution offered by the developer was to actually put a traffic circle similar to what you have in some of the nearby subdivisions where you drive down and there's a p place that you can actually turn around, uh, make a turning movement and come back out without having turned into a driveway or back back down the street. And so we feel that it meets the code, uh, particularly the intent of the code. In, in, if in an abundance of caution, the commission wants to make a waiver and make it formal, we have no issue with that, but we don't think that it's it's absolutely necessary. <clears throat> Commissioner Casabon. Yes, I'd just like to clarify um, why I seconded this. Uh, I have talked to some of you after it was presented um, the last time about, and y I was questioned as to what we look at, and um, I have answered this question for. 20 something years now, especially when federal agents show up at my house and want to know how can we can vote on certain um, subdivisions or put that many houses in and, and this kind of thing. And all I could do was go in and give them this packet. And the packet indicates that we have engineers, we have the reports from the professionals uh, that I'm not an engineer or, a, you know, no traffic studies. I just know how to read them. Um, that's where we get our information from. And everything that uh, we look at has met the requirements uh, that I cannot dispute those findings. And that's why I second it. Commissioner Drum. Here's to Shane. It was brought up earlier uh, by these nice folks out here about a uh, buffer, a 50-foot buffer, that the buffer wasn't going to be 50 feet. Am I correct? And um, that would be along the southern side right here. But I thought I heard you say that there is a 50-foot no-cut buffer in that area. Is that true? Um, it is not true uh, as it relates to the entire southern boundary. Uh, assuming all of you have a copy of the uh, plan in front of you, uh, the only 50-foot no-cut buffer is along Sharp Road, the entrance where the connection for the subdivision intersects Sharp Road. But interestingly, yeah. after the Zoning Commission uh, uh, recommendation, in October and before the council appeal and ultimate council adoption of the zoning ordinance, Mr. Taladana insisted that a 25 foot no cut buffer be added in that portion of phase three, 
which abuts five homes in Victorian Oaks. And hopefully the plat you have shows that. I don't know. It may not, because I realize you don't have the PUD plan. You have an engineering drawing. So to be more particular, if you would look, I don't know if the plan you have shows Victorian Oaks to the south, okay? Well, I will tell you categorically that any portion of our southern boundary that abuts an existing residence has a 25-foot no-cut buffer. And that was something that Mr. Toledana added for the benefit of the five homes in Victorian Oaks. The comments I heard this evening about Mr. from Mr. Sharp and others that their properties abut this property and that they're going to look at garden homes, I don't know where those properties are. I am very familiar with the surveys, and I've been on the ground an awful lot, and I think I know where the homes abut the southern boundary. So hopefully that answers your question. 50-foot no cut along Sharp Road, 25-foot no cut where any of our proposed garden homes would abut homes in Victorian Oaks. Now may I ask someone from over here a question. These homes that bound are aligned right here with these new homes that are going up, how far back does your property go right now? Will it go right up to that area? Is all that cleared or do you have trees in there already? No, it's not clear. So how many how many feet of trees I mean, do you not, have? Uh, He's talking about the from property. the house to the property line? Yeah, well let's say they put they a twenty five foot. Line. Okay. They if they put a twenty five foot no cut buffer, yes. how much more of your yard is already past that that's that you haven't cut? Let's, so let's say they put a twenty five and you have a thirty. They're clear. Right to the end? Either they have fences or they're just um, above the, the back half, the back of the property. But um, they're people's backyards. Oh, okay. They're people's backyards. Then is the border of Brentwood. Yeah, I'm just trying to. And Mr. Sharp's property does abut Brentwood, and St. Michael's Church abuts, abuts Brentwood. Okay. And, and the Sharps' houses are near the back of the property, kind of in line with where the Okay, so right now, they're, if they didn't put a no cut, there wouldn't be one, right? Correct. Okay. I do have a comment about the turn lanes, though. Um, previously, when all this was brought up, I think I was the lone individual who voted against it. And one of the things was Sharp Road that I wasn't happy with. And because no turnaround was on that uh, road that went all the way down to the end, they were kind enough to at least put something in there to assist the traffic so it doesn't back up up and down Sharp Road. At least they have something there that there wouldn't be before. And so um, personally, I think it's a... Uh, Right, I've driven it a couple of times to check it out. On the street. It's at 59 and it's at Asbury. We have subdivisions larger than this along Sharp that don't have to turn lanes. They can get out. Well, I, I, yeah, it was my fault that I didn't ask you to come up. Commissioner asked a question, so yeah, I'm granting the commissioner you. the privilege of an answer. I apologize. I'm fine. Commissioner Dougherty. Yes, uh, this is to uh, staff, Jay. Uh, on the uh, staff report, uh, item nine, informational items, gravity drainage, drainage district five comments. Uh, five must be addressed before work order is issued. I haven't seen their report. It was not in the staff report. They haven't issued their final report yet, so we're still waiting for their comments and any comments that they have will have to be addressed before we issue a work order. So right now, you've looked at the preliminary? Our engineering's looked at the preliminary? We've looked at the preliminary plans submitted by Kelly McHugh for Brentwood and made our comments on them. Uh, but you haven't seen Drainage District 5's report? No. That's why this comment is in the staff report. 
that we are requiring any comments that the gravity drainage district might have must be addressed before we issue a work order. Uh, okay, thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. One last question I had on, and it was related to drainage. One of the com some of the comments that were made in the audience uh, related to um, drainage flowing from their property that traditionally flows through this area. Uh, clearly, the developers putting in a lot of infrastructure for drainage, additional pond, pond size. Uh, one comment was made about either having some sort of a ditch on the back property line, and that's going to be a problem for the no cut, but uh, is that something that's being considered to, um, and perhaps this, this should be to the developer, is that something that would, would have some merit to have some sort of a way to carry water from uh, the back of your property or the uh, the property that abuts these individual subdivisions and homes and, and I guess the church to get it out quicker as opposed to there were some comments made about it having to flow through uh, existing properties. Right. Um, the water is channelized rather than there being what I guess we will call a swale or ditch across the back of our southern lots. The channelization or swaling occurs between each lot running in a south to north direction because the water, in fact, naturally flows from the south to north. So the plan specifically prohibits the introduction of any fill into these nine foot wide areas between the homes to make sure. And that plan is not only something that is in the preliminary plan, but when each home is built, uh, to pull a building permit, you have to submit a drainage plan for that lot. And as you may be aware, you have drainage inspections at various stages throughout the construction of the home before there's a certificate of occupancy uh, granted to ensure that the concept of the drainage plan, and that is to make sure that the natural drainage, water going from south to north, whether it's from the St. Michael's parking lot, whether it's from Victorian Oaks, or whether it's from some of these other properties that might abut our green space to the east, those waters will in fact be allowed to flow. Okay, I appreciate that then. Then whose responsibility is it gonna to be to maintain those swales? Because obviously over time you'll have erosion and a variety of things and it'll settle. Sure. Um, it potentially could slow things down, so. Well, I think it, it ultimately would be a responsibility, for, first and foremost, of the lot owner. I guess next level would be the homeowners association. Uh, but I think thirdly is that this is a condition of the approval. It's going to be a condition of the building permit, of the construction, of the certificate of occupancy. So I think there's an enforcement mechanism also in favor of the parish. I understand during the construction. I was talking no, no, about 20 post, years from now. No, uh, post, but post-construction. Okay. I, don't, I don't think a private individual has the ability or right to block part of the drainage system that has been approved by the parish. I realize it's private property, but maybe staff differs uh, and feels otherwise. But uh, I think, again, there will be three levels, the lot owner, the homeowners association, and then ultimately the parish. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Davis to approve, second by Commissioner Casabon. Please vote. Motion carries. Can I, can I make another point, just to talk about something else in general? Or? Certainly. Uh, again, this commission makes suggestions to the council. As Mr. Pug Lorraine said, if you don't agree with this commission, you can go ahead and go right to the council with it, and maybe that will give you some time to discuss it even further if you have some more questions and such. Thank you. Final subdivision review, 2016-426-FP, River Park Crossing, Phase 1, Ward 3, District 3. Developer owner, D.R. Horton Incorporated, engineer, Kelly McCune and Associates, Inc. Parish Council Representative, the Honorable James Red Thompson, postponed at the November 9, 2016 meeting. 
Since this case has already been postponed twice in accordance to parish and state law, the Planning Commission must act on this request. Staff. Periodic inspections have been made by this office during construction and the final inspection was made on November 22, 2016. The inspection disclosed that all of the asphalt roads are constructed, road shoulders need to be constructed, and roadside ditches need final grading. The following uncompleted items existed at the time of final inspection and will be completed before the plats are signed. The signage plan and as-built signage plan is required to be submitted. The benchmark information is missing on the final plat. The final plat needs to be revised to include this information. Paving and drainage plan, the removal of the existing culverts at MP Planche and Park Hill Boulevard has been completed. Remove the current call out on the paving and drainage plan and replace with as-built information. Number four, the turn lane work on Highway 25 has been completed. Remove the to be constructed note on the paving and drainage plan. Acceptance of the newly constructed turn lanes by LADOTD must be submitted to St. Tammany Parish. Water and sewer plan, the sewer system. DEQ permit number is missing from the sewer system notes. Revise the plan to include the permit number. The PWS ID number is missing from the water notes. Revise the plan to include this number. General comments, need asphalt, uh, need base test results, need asphalt test results, need utility trench bedding test results, street name signs, traffic signs, blue reflectors at the hydrants, Verification of updated permits from all applicable state agencies must be provided to St. Tammany Parish, including LDH, DEQ, LDWF. A negative bacteriological report relative to the construction of the project's water system has not been, yet been issued by DHH as required by Section 4070 of the Subdivision Regulatory Ordinance 499. A letter of acceptance and responsibility for the perpetual maintenance operation of the water and sewer system has not yet been issued by the utility provider as required. Should the Planning Commission approve the request for final approval, a warranty obligation will be required for the infrastructure in the amount of 2,967 linear feet times $20 per linear foot for $65,300 for a period of two years. The staff recommends approval of the final proposed subdivision request subject to the developer complying with all comments and no plats to be signed until all items are satisfactorily completed. Mandatory developmental fees are as required. Road impact fee is equal to $1,077 per lot times 49 lots for $52,773. Drainage impact fee is equal to $1,114 per lot for 49 lots for a total of $54,000. $586. Fees are due before final subdivision plats can be signed. This subdivision is located within the urban growth boundary line. Revised drawings will not be accepted prior to the December 13th Planning Commission meeting to ensure that all additional comments established at the meeting will be incorporated into the revised plans. Mr. Shane. Good evening. Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm, P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, I represent um, the developer, um, D.R. Horton, Inc., uh, in connection with this request for final. Um, we are very aware, and the reason that this project has been tabled the last two months, of your insistence that uh, all items be fully complete or at least substantially complete for you to consider final subdivision approval. Um, today, I think shortly after lunch, we submitted revised drawings to the engineering department, which in fact meet and satisfy, in our opinion, uh, all of the requested items with the exception of the following. Uh, under general comments, number nine, the utility trench bedding test results should be available within um, three to five days. Is that so somewhere along that line? They were obviously not submitted as of today. Uh, the only other items are what I would consider to be fairly standard items that you sometimes see at the time of final, and that would be general comments 13, 14, and 15. With regard to 13, I would like to state that we do in fact have uh, DHH uh, and DEQ permits. Uh, we await the wildlife and fishery um, approval. Uh, items 14 and 15, as you know, typically are not available for you at the time for final consideration. So with that having been said, uh, we understand that uh, you uh, may want to condition the final as it relates to not having item 9 uh, and also us uh, not having all these other matters. 
uh, we would respectfully request that final subdivision approval be granted, that plats be signed and recorded, and that if you have any hesitancy with regard to these approvals, that perhaps occupancy be uh, conditioned or blocked, withheld until these conditions are satisfied. Uh, but we think they will be forthcoming uh, and hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, if any of you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them at the appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Richard. Uh, I've looked at this as well and, and um, I move for approval subject to uh, all the conditions that staff has may be, be met before plats can be signed. So moved, Commissioner Casabon. I'll second that motion. Um, yes, the turning lane is wonderful. They, it has moved that traffic on and from the existing uh, planche road that people have, do have houses in there and they have that completed and it's very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You ready to answer questions, Mr. Shane? Do have any rebuttal time? <laughs> Were you going to rebut to an approval in a second? Uh, I, would, I would like to at least ask a question about the motion, which I respect. Um, as I understood the motion, I believe it suggested that the plats not be signed and recorded <clears throat> until all conditions had been satisfied. Uh, and I was hoping there might be consideration that the plats be signed and recorded and that the occupancy be withheld until all conditions are satisfied. I have enough, uh, I have confidence that the commission heard what I asked. I'm only asking again, I guess, if that might be a consideration. I'll defer to staff. Com I would use my rebuttal time to say that our, the, the uh, developer has the ability to do up to five uh, spec homes so they can actually begin some construction but we would be concerned about a failure something happens something unforeseen happens and we do not have approval for the ultimate F, uh, uh, effluent and have people trying to move into houses mr. Shane thank you I appreciate and, and respect the comment but it seems to me that uh, we could also um, confirm that we would not be able to sell any of the lots and obviously there would be no occupancy of the homes. The risk falls clearly on the owner developer. And you might ask, well, wait a minute, you've got the ability to go forward with five. Uh, my client would like to go forward with much more than five homes at this point. They're very confident that these approvals will be forthcoming and they simply would like to get under construction. So uh, again, uh, if the condition would be that no lots be transferred and certainly that no occupancy certificate of occupancy be granted until all approvals have been submitted to staff's approval, we would at least appreciate that consideration. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, from staff's perspective, obviously, it, clearly the occupancy component of it, I agree. We would not allow that. We would be remiss if we did so. Uh, it sounds to me that the developer is taking the risk here. Is this something that's consistent what we've done in the past? I, I cannot recall a time when we've done this in the past. I'm, I'm, then I'm, I'm not confident if we haven't done it in the past. I understand what they're trying to accomplish. What we're waiting on is some, um, some bacteriological reports, et cetera. I, I'm not sure what the, what the petitioner is uh, concerned about a timing issue here, but I, I'm, I'm, my motion stands as, as stated. Any further comments of the commission? So Commissioner Richard, your motion is to fulfill the obligations as stated by the staff in its report, correct? We have a motion by Commissioner Richard as stated that the obligations in the staff's report must be fulfilled, second by Commissioner Casabon. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. 
2016-451-FP, Hidden Creek, Phase 2, Ward 1, District 3. Developer Owner, Hidden Creek, LLC, Engineer Myers Engineering. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable James Red Thompson. Postponed at the November 9th, 2016 meeting. Staff. Periodic inspections have been made by this office during construction and the final inspection was made on November 22nd, 2016. The inspection disclosed that all of the concrete roads are constructed, road shoulders are constructed, roadside ditches, ditches are functioning, and detention ponds are constructed. The following uncompleted items existed at the time of final inspection and will be completed before plats are signed. On all sheets, the typical comment on the title block revised the title block to include phase two behind the Hidden Creek subdivision on all sheets. Water and sewer, a letter of acceptance and responsibility for the perpetual maintenance and obligation, uh, operation of the water and sewer system has not yet been issued by the utility company as, as required. Informational items, the subdivision plant will need an act of correction when and if the reduction of the 200-foot no-cut buffer to a 100-foot no-cut buffer for Soap and Tallow Creek is approved by Wildlife and Fisheries. Should the Planning Commission approve the request for final approval, a warranty obligation will be required for the infrastructure in the amount of 2,500 linear feet at $25 per linear foot for $62,500 for a period of five years. The staff recommends approval of the proposed subdivision request subject to the developer complying with all comments and no plats to be signed until all items are satisfactorily completed. Mandatory developmental fees are required as followed. Road impact fee, $1,077 per lot times 55 lots for $59,235. Drainage impact fee, $1,114 per lot times 55 lots for $61,270. Fees are due before subdivision plats can be signed. The subdivision is within the urban growth boundary line. Revised drawings will not be accepted prior to December 13th planning commission meeting to ensure that all additional comments established at the meeting can be incorporated into the revised plans. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Matt Filotti, I'm with Meyer Engineers. I'm representing uh, the developer, uh, Hidden Creek LLC. Uh, as you recall, the last meeting we tabled it, we had uh, probably about 30 some odd comments. Um, uh, and at that meeting, we had stated, you know, we had submitted the plans. They just didn't have time to, uh, to review because of the election and everything. Um, you know, as you can see, you know, those comments have whittled down to basically one comment that was a couple sheets out of the set. Um, so we just respect, uh, respectfully ask for your uh, approval. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? This time I close it to the public and bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Commissioner Davis to approve. Second by Commissioner Willie. Any further comments? Please vote. Motion carries. Proposed amendments to Ordinance 499, we have none. Old Business, Colonial Pinnacle Nord de Lac Subdivision, Ward 1, District 1. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Marty Dean. A request by the developer to revise the detention fee in lieu of detention first flush. Staff. Honorable Commissioners, the proposed east-west road being relocated in a northerly direction to accommodate St. Tammany Parish Cultural Arts District construction along with commercial development, see attached drawings one and two. In doing so, a portion of the existing drainage detention pond will be eliminated. The remaining detention will provide for water quality for the first one inch of rainfall across the entire 140-acre development. The enclosed letter dated December 1st, 2016 from the developer's engineer has been reviewed by St. Tammany Parish staff and administration. St. Tammany Parish is in agreement with the request and has no objection to the proposed submittal as provided, uh, which will provide for water quality in lieu of detention and not require a fee in lieu of detention. A waiver will be required for this uh, request. Mr. Chairman, just, this is a... Uh a little history, uh, and I think there may only maybe be three of you that remember when Colonial Pinnacle came through the originally. Uh, there was extensive discussion at the time. Colonial Pinnacle was proposing a uh, first flush system, a water quality system. They actually did not have to put the ponds in uh, because of their location, just as we did earlier with uh, River Club, because of their location <coughs> immediately adjacent to the Chifuncta River in the lower third of that basin, very large cross-section of the river. Uh, we, 
they would not have had to put in the 25% reduction. Uh, the 25% reduction was actually a, uh, a benefit of those ponds they put in for water quality. And with the filling of, of this pond, they can fill this pond and meet the 25% reduction. The problem is that they have to change the design of the pond, specifically the, in, the way the intake is handled, where in order to get the reduction, they will have to, uh, they, we will lose the water quality element. And it's our position that at this location on the river with this project, with the much parking and, and hard service that we have, uh, at this location, the 25% reduction is not as important as the, uh, the water quality issue. And it's actually water quality is one of those things that we're talking to more and more as we're mo moving towards uh, revising the development code. I know some of you are, have, have worked with us uh, in some, on the very beginnings of that. And, uh, and water quality is going to be a key issue of that. So uh, we would recommend uh, approval of the waivers so that we could move forward and end up in, a, in the a situation where you can build the east-west road to the new performing arts center which will run if you go to colonial pinnacle and you go to the second uh map in your packet the boulevard going up and down on the page north south is actually the access to those apartments that are being built in the back pet smart academy is to your left the big pile of dirt was there for a long time i think is actually parts of it at least are still there to the right, that's where the road is going to go. And so we have to move the road for a new development coming in to the south of that. So we're shifting the road up. And so uh, uh, they will have to fill the, that portion of the detention pond that gives the, the double benefit. And so we would recommend uh, 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 approval of the waiver. Thank you. Commissioner. No. Commissioner Randolph. Yes, sir. I approve the the waiver for the detention and the first flush. Motion by Commissioner Randolph for the waiver. I'll second. Commissioner, second by Commissioner Richard. Just a comment. This makes perfect sense as to sometimes why you look at regulations and have to have to have the flexibility to make changes. This makes no sense to, to detain water when we're that close to the river and instead detain it and wait for the rush of water coming down the river to hit at the same time. This is when we want to flush it through the system uh, as quick as we can. And when we add the quality component to it, that's, that's even a bigger plus. So um, I'm definitely in favor of this. Thank you. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Randolph for the waiver, second by Commissioner Richard. Please vote. Motion carries. Entering parish right of way, Madison Avenue, Ward 1, District 1. Debtor Teodicio and Christine Aparicio, Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Marty Dean. A request by debtor for an extension of time. Staff. Honorable Commissioners, the above reference resolution was adopted on September 8, 2015. The resolution states that the petitioner must submit all documentation within six months from the date of adoption. The petitioner has not furnished all documentation required within the six month period and is requesting an extension of time. See attached email dated November 14, 2016. Since time has expired for the petitioner to furnish all documentation, the following action is required by the Planning Commission to allow the petitioner to proceed with the project. The action required extend adoption date to 12 13 16 thereby extending the six month submittal of documentation to 6 13 17 and the completion date to 12 13 18. thank you is the petitioner here please state your name and address my name is christine aparicio and my address is 40010 old mill lane ponchatoula louisiana <clears throat> And you go ahead, ma'am. We came before you a year ago. I think it was in September, and um, you re approved our request. We just have two lots at the end of a street where the street was never, for whatever reason, finished and paved. So um, we requested to enter the parish right away. Um, once we had our engineering plans drawn up and submitted, a director, uh, Department of Engineering with the parish approved them. But when we began to gather estimates, it was just higher than what we could handle at that time so that's why we're asking for the extension to begin that process now which at that point we just 
kind of tabled it and let it sit for a while. <laughs> Any further comment? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the petition? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Hearing none, close it to the public and bring it to the commission. <coughs> Commissioner Dougherty. Yes, Mr. Aparicio, uh, you were unable to get the funding previously. Do you have the funding lined up? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Lauren. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Lauren to approve, second by Richardson. Commissioner Richardson. No further comments, please vote. Motion carries. Is there any new business to come before the commission? Everyone have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and a Happy Holiday Season.